All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who, who, well, salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Tiles of War, back at you again with another lesson. And as always, I pray, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he allowed these lessons to be edifying to those of the whole four elect. And, um, you know, I just wanted to uh, say a few words and maybe bring a few scriptures. I don't have scriptures queued up, but this one in particular that you see on the screen is uh, was on my mind. And uh, I just want to say, you know, uh, we we woke up to this truth. Uh, in fact, the Lord woke us up to this truth. And the first thing that came in our mind and our conscience was fear. You know, fear. Matter of fact, let's uh let's uh look up fear. You know, simple the word fear. Very simple. It says an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. All right, so fear is an unpleasant emotion. Yeah, that unpleasant emotion came upon us when we first heard this word. You know, you felt it. You put your head down because you know that the way you were living was wrong. The stuff you done, you know, were wrong, was wrong and you're not right. The unpleasant emotion caused by the belief, right? They go to another word, a key word, belief. You believe, all right? By the belief that someone or something is dangerous. Who is that someone or something? That is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Knowing that the Lord knows all our thoughts, knowing that the Lord controls all elements and the most high is everything. All right. He, he controls the spirits. All right. Whether righteous. Well, let's say he control all the angels, whether the ones on his right side or the ones on his left. That he would send forth these angels to destroy you if you ain't living right. OK. Not only not only these angels, but the Lord can send you through, you know, misfortune, you know. He can send you through trouble. All right. The most high is nothing to play with. So it says likely to cause pain or threat because the Lord, you know, is also just mentioned, you know, the Lord was called Alasaija. Devastator, despoiler, assault, power, Alasaija. All right. The heathens called the Lord Alasaija because the Lord was like a demon unto them. Destroying the asses. So how much more us of the covenant? So when you first came in this truth. And you believed. What came in your conscience? Fear. You feared. An unpleasant emotion. The belief that someone or something is dangerous. Alright. Now it's the one thing we used to say a lot. And um, I think, I don't know where it came from. Maybe it, it might have came from the apostles. I'm not sure, but I know brothers are saying it a lot. And we said it all the time. You know, that the hardest thing about being in this truth is staying in the truth. And someone would say, well, why so? Because you have to fight. Your, your, you have to fight your flesh. It's the spirit versus the flesh. You have your flesh that crave um, fleshly things, which is nothing wrong with uh, lust. But when lust is wicked or lust is drawing your attention away from the Lord and there's no balance, there's no priority, you are losing the fear, the unpleasant emotion 
caused by the belief of someone or something is dangerous. So you don't really fear the Lord when you go and lead to your flesh. But if you live more for your spirit, all right, the spirit overrides the flesh. So the hardest thing about uh, being in the truth is staying in the truth. Okay. And you can get wrapped up into this thing. You think you know it. You think you got it. But not seeing the signs that the Lord put before you. And the Lord got brothers that can see these things. All right. He can see these things. But what man do is that he would justify it. All right. He would justify it. If he's a wicked man, a righteous man would would repent. He would, you know, check himself. You know, so let me just read the scripture here. Which is um, Ecclesiastes 32, 17. It says a sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. All right. And that's typical two thirds of Jake, of our people. You tell them about themselves to reprove them, which is to correct them, you know. And here it is. He would turn around and point the finger. Because he feel like, why you, why me? You know, what about you? Well, if you did this and you did that, it wouldn't be like that, you know. It says a sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. So he wants to bend the truth of the matter. According to his way, so he can feel as though he is he was right. All right. It's all about I'm right. Well, the Lord is right. And the Lord did set up judges. He set up men who can judge you. If you don't do right. You know, now, you know, brothers. Uh, in this truth. We have met each other in this truth. We might have never known each other in the world or could have, but, you know, more than likely, no, because brothers, you know, come from different walks of life. Brothers come from different backgrounds, you know, different, you know, tribes of, of Jacob, you know, brothers, personality and uh, talents led them in a field of, of its own. You know, so while we in this truth, the Lord allowed us to find each other, you know, so that we can serve the Lord. All right. With truth and sincerity and become a brotherhood. All right. Now, brother, as the scripture say in the Apocrypha, could be a crutch. All right. When a brother's down, another brother could pick you up. But one thing a brother can't do is hold your hand, man. Now, you knew, you know, maybe favorite among a brother, brother take you up under, you know, the wing, so to say, feed you with the word, you know, and uh, kind of, uh, to, uh, let's say what uh, Apostle Paul did with Timothy, if that's the case. But like they say, the saying is you can't make a... I don't even know how it goes all the way, but I know it's around the lines of you can't take a horse to the water and make him drink. You know, you could take him to the water, but you can't make him drink because at the end of the day, this is your salvation that you're fighting for. All right. And when you show brothers that the world is more important than the truth, then there's a problem. All right. There is a problem. And if that's a problem, then guess what? You ain't doing too good. You're not doing too good, man. You know, and it's a matter of time that the Lord is going to judge you. You know, we too far along in this thing. And at a time and season like this, for any brother to be uh, 
choosing the world over the over the over the uh truth. You know, now you could whip it up, you could mix it up, twist it up, and say what you want to say, you know, in, in favor of your own way or how you feel. But the truth stands, you know. The spirit speaketh, man. It shows through actions. Now I understand. Now I understand. You know. Um, and, uh, you know, I keep that to myself. But I'm going to say, now I understand when it comes to men. If, if, if the truth ain't first, get away from me. You know, that's just the truth. If the truth is not first, get away from uh, the brothers. Stay in the world, man. You know, but um, let's um grab some more scriptures here. And you know what? This is a simple, basic topic, but uh, it's very needful. All right. Now, let's just go and keep. Let's just stay on this word fear. This is uh Proverbs chapter one and seven. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. All right. So, you know, it's very basic. It says the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. And that's why I went into the definition of fear. All right. Because it's the beginning of knowledge. How are you going to, you know, know this word? It's going to take you to humble yourself. You know, everything you was taught growing up has to be tossed out. You have to be retaught. You have to be taught all over. That comes that uh, repentance. All right. You shedding off the old man and becoming a new man. So through fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. Now you start to know. Now you of the knowing now. It says, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Yeah, because a fool, you know, he don't he, he don't care about the wisdom behind the truth. And nor is he going to listen to instructions because he ain't about to hear that. So let's say you are following the instructions. But now you used to this routine of things. So now you're doing bare minimum. <clears throat> you're trying to do you're, what you're doing is you playing this game. You, you cheap skating the Lord because you're not giving the Lord all you got. But you're just doing just enough you know, so that you don't get rebuked. You know, and that takes something in a man to, to examine himself. You know, you know that you have ass and you know that you put in the, the world first before the Lord. You know. So it says the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Let's move on. Proverbs 1 and 26. I also will laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your fear come. All right. You know, that's uh, plain and cut. Okay. You know, the Lord is going to mock, you know, when calamity comes and your fear come upon you. Because why? You didn't take heed to the Lord's fear. All right. You didn't reverence, respect the Lord, you know, before the evil days come not. So when the evil, de evil days come, now the Lord is laughing at you. You know, you don't mock the Lord, man. You don't taste of this heavenly gift and get the instructions and then just sit it, you know, down on the table somewhere and then walk off. All right. The Lord is a jealous power. OK, he pours his spirit out upon his men, his prophets. OK, and and they speak his words. It's not of the, the, the man, it's of the Lord. The Lord is using the men, the men of the Lord. He's using them to speak and to say what he wants to say. All right. The Lord doesn't need them, but he uses them. All right. It's according to the order that he set up the foundation because the Lord, the heavenly father could do what he want. All right. But he's bound by his word as scriptures say. Okay. The heavenly father is not a man that lies. Okay. So anyway, Let's move on. Proverbs 1 and 27. 
When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. You see? Why? You know, because, matter of fact, let me jump into that and read the next verse. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall thou call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So you want all the Lord's attention. You want all the Lord's attention when you need it. But when the Lord is calling for your attention to put away this fucking stupid ass bullshit ass world. Nah, you got to, you know, you putting the Lord on the back burner. So what if the Lord put you on the back burner, so to say? What if the Lord don't answer when you call? You know, these are some things to, to meditate on and check and check yourself. You know, priority. You know, it goes for myself first. You know, and I'm saying this, putting it in a video, hopefully to edify those of the whole four elect. All right. You know, you have to fear. It boils down to fear, man. You know, guys go off because they don't fear. Guys start getting lazy because they don't fear. Guys start choosing the world over the Lord because they don't fear. It's not the same fear that they feared when they first came in. You know, hey, guys start going off because why? They're not praying to stay in the faith. They're not praying to stay humble in this truth. They're not praying to the Lord that the Lord don't take away his spirit from them. You have to pray. You have to fight. You have to want this truth. Nothing else fucking matters, man. Nothing else matters at the end of the day. The Lord is going to take everything of yours and he's going to take it away. And then you're going to want all the, all the smoke with the Lord, man. You're going to want the Lord to be there. But right now, are you there for the Lord? You know, are you slipping away? Well, you need to check yourself, man. You know, priority, man. And brothers can see it. Okay. Brothers can see it. So let's move on. Proverbs 129. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. See, that knowledge is knowing, man. All right. You're not in the loop. You don't know what's going on. What's the topic of the week? You know, not watching the apostles videos too much. You know, not catching up. You know, it's hard to watch everything, you know. But most importantly, you should want to know for yourself, not what somebody got to tell you. You should want to know for yourself, you know, what's going on, being in the loop. You know, you're blind. All right. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. If you feared the Lord, you would be watching. You would be putting, uh, uh, you would be a watchman looking over the tower, man. Watching to see what the Lord is going to say unto you instead of just being in a motion to kick out three videos and that's it. Three videos and that's it. You know, now, sometimes in a week, it just be three videos. But most of the time should be, you know, you doing more than three videos. You know, most of the time you should be in the spirit. But sometimes, hey, it be that way, you know. But it shows. It shows in your pattern. I don't, listen, who am I, you know? You know, I just hope that this is edifying. It's a little different, kind of just speaking. Thoughts that was in the mind and that I woke up and, you know. <sighs> Listen, man. So I, let me just read. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. All right. You did not choose the fear of the Lord. 
When you don't choose the fear of the Lord, you're going the other way. Proverbs 1 and 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So those who hearken unto the Lord and not just doing bare minimum, you know, because God, hey, you know what? You know, you know, guys get in this loop just doing bare minimum and it shows your pattern is going to show. It's going to show your character. It's going to show who you are. All right. And it says, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. So whoso hearkeneth unto the Lord and give his heart, mind, body, and soul. All right. Being sincere, giving it all he got is going to dwell safely. Okay. Bare minimum. Let me say it's a demon, man. It's a demon because it's the sincerity in the man. You know, when it comes to that bare minimum, that sincerity is not in that man. You know, bare minimum is, oh, I'm going to just do this. So, you know, you ain't going to say nothing to me. You know, uh, I, I did, I did mine. You know, but really, in other ways, it's showing you know, the Lord is on the back. He in your back pocket, you know, like the Lord belongs there. You know, and it's like you could fool, you know, but so but for so long. All right, because your actions going to show the spirit is going to show who you are. It says it shall be quiet from the fear of evil because evil is coming. Evil is here. All right, let's move on. Proverbs 2 and 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of Yahweh, which is going to keep us stable. The knowledge and wisdom is the stability of thy times. Okay? So we need this know this knowledge of knowing. Okay? The knowing of the Lord. The knowledge of the Lord. We need the wisdom. We need the understanding so that we can understand what time it is. You know, a lot of uh, Jake two-thirds they don't understand what time it is so they're gonna get microchipped all right they're gonna get microchipped they're gonna get that 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 jabby jab man they don't understand the times but we do proverbs 3 and 7 be not wise in thy own eyes fear yahweh and depart from evil exactly because if it's not a faith then it's sin as apostle paul said Romans 14, if it's not of faith, then it's sin, man. Straight up. Be not wise in thy own eyes. That take me back to that Ecclesiasticus. Sirach, all right? A wicked man, um, a sinful man will not be reproved. He will find up an excuse according to his own will. Be not wise in thy own eyes. You think you're wiser than the Lord? You know? Scriptures say, lean out upon thy own understanding. You know? Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. All right. You know, one one thing, you know, the scriptures say, you know, we want to um please the Lord. We want to make we want the Lord to be delighted in us. All right. We're doing the things that the Lord delight in. And and how and what are those things? Those things is that our mind, body, all right, spirit, our sincerity, our integrity, you know, our faithfulness is in the Lord. It's all in the Lord, man. And, um, hey, oh, and, um, I mean, more importantly, is doing what the Lord said to do. Okay. Yeah. Doing what the Lord said to do. That's how uh, you do the things the Lord delight in. It's what the Lord said to do. And then, you know, upon that is uh, your sincerity, your faith. <laughs> you know, not uh, putting the world first. You know, Lord knows what you're doing. You ain't fooling him. And the Lord ain't going to be happy. You know. It says, uh, Proverbs 3 and 25, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of desolation of the wicked when it cometh. 
why the elect men bro the, the brothers you know down to the to the sisters who women who believe you know when you put the lord first and you fear yahweh by shimei shai the lord is going to increase our strength all right so when sudden fear come you know when the enemy come in like a flood it says neither of desolation of the wicked when it cometh all right so we're not going to be in this um this shook not knowing what to do you know or or being down and out as if there's no hope you know fear is not gonna uh play that part upon you because you feared your how about shy all right fear is a demon man you know the lord told us not to fear the enemy but he said the, you know we fear him because why we know he's the true government okay the true power he is not the true power. He's a he's a false power that's set up temporarily to destroy the other wicked. All right, which is the two thirds of Israel. All right, and to give them that judgment. Remember, he's the the, the whooping stick of the Lord. All right, uh, Proverbs eight and thirteen, and I'll wrap it up with this one. Or yeah, because it's a lot here. Like I said, I didn't have precepts lined up, but uh, I know this word fear. It goes a long way, man. It's very important to make it your main priority to check yourself, man, before you wreck yourself. You know? And brothers, when we around, you know, you brothers could pick it and pick it up, man. Brothers are spiritual. All right? You know? It's not the end. It's not the end yet, but it's correction. This goes for myself first. You know? And then it goes out for others, you know? To any, who, any brother or woman that applies, man. Sister, all right, and the truth. So it says, Proverbs 3 and 25, be not afraid of sudden fear. We read that. Proverbs 8 and 13, the fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. Ooh. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy in the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. So the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You know, so who to say that we're not supposed to hate? <laughs> Who's to say we're not supposed to hate? You know, we're supposed to hate all evilness. We have a righteous, a righteous reason to hate. And the Lord backs that righteous reason. He's with that. You know. The fear of the the fear of Yahweh is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. You know, we're supposed to hate any anyone who has that pride and that arrogancy it says in the evil way in the forward mouth do i hate and this is what the lord hates so if the lord hated we hate it all right because it ain't right it's a it's it ain't right it leads to error it leads to destruction okay it's a man you can't trust sneaky man clever crafty you know justifying you know every every wrong that it, that this that the man does, okay. It's not a true brother. Proverbs nine and ten: the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs ten twenty four: the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted, uh, granted. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of Yahweh prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. All right. Uh, Proverbs 13, 13. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. You see? So you despise this word. That's heavy. You despising this word, man. All right, because you got other things you want to do, you know. And there's plenty of excuses to call it, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yo, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you know. All right, all right. We'll see. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Dang, so many. Proverbs 14, 2. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. 
fear of Yahweh. But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Proverbs 14, 16, a ways, excuse me, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. Uh, this last one, Proverbs 14, 26, in the fear of Yahweh is strong confidence. Whew. And his children shall have a place of refuge. See, that strong confidence is not mistaken as pride. That strong confidence is in the fear of the Lord. You knowing that you give it all what you got and all that you can do. When things are not in your hands to make a decision and you have to bear what it is you're going through. You know, you're having that confidence to get through it because of the hope, the faith. And most importantly, the fear that you have because you know you gave it all you got. So now it's up to the Lord to defend you, to make it right. It's up to the Lord to step in, to intervene, divine intervention, all right, to set to set it right and to show you his love towards you, man. That's where the confidence come in when you know that I gave it all I got, man. I, 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 I strive my best, you know. You know, just like compared to sport players, man, basketball, football, baseball, whatever sport, fourth quarter, you know. And, and y'all going back and forth, team is head-to-head, -head, good matchup. You giving it all you got. You diving for the ball. You running hard. You know, you focus. You're going to get that tackle. You, you giving it that inf. And at the end of the game, whether win or lose, you can say, man, I, I man, I gave, I threw my, I gave it all I got, man. Fucking damn near, I killed myself trying to win this game, you know. And then you might get mad because you see other teammates who was on the game with you, and they wasn't doing that. So now you mad, man. Looking at it, looking at one of your players on on your team, looking at him sideways. Fucking nigga, man. Get this nigga the fuck up out of here, man. And tired of that nigga because you was going hard and then you looking at him that's on your team and you like this nigga man this nigga out of here man he the reason why we fucking lost you know and that's on a car a worldly tip a situation that happens i play sports i've done that before pissed off man you going hard giving it all you got and your teammate he he, he just worry about stacks he worry about as long as he get his numbers you know, put up his average numbers, his buckets, and we lost. Meanwhile, we ain't going to the conference, man. <laughs> Our season done. Our season is done. But this fool over here happy about his fucking stacks. That shit pisses you off, man. You know? Pisses you off, man. So how much more in this truth, man? You know? So, you know, Lord willing... I hope this lesson was edifying. All right. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. You know, brothers, stay strong, continue to pray, and um, keep pushing. And uh, hopefully, I hope this lesson was edifying. You know, it's all for motivation, you know, and to um, do better. All right. So with that, shalom.